Welcome back to the channel everyone and thanks for watching today's video is a Toyota 4Runner. Someone punched this panel. Don't know why, but let's get into this thing. Alright, we're at the customer's location. This repair was about a three and a half, maybe four hour repair is pretty difficult. Anyways, long story short, we got the dent out. We're breaking out the Milwaukee Packout set. If you don't have one of these, I highly recommend it. It's absolutely phenomenal. Dent Baron Wagon. 2015 Ram Pro Master City. It's a pretty nice little vehicle. It's got about 170,000 miles on it. Works quite nicely. Uh, so, what we're going to do with this repair, we're going to start off with uh, Kiko K Bar. <clears throat> That's what we're breaking out here. If you see in the background the, in the van, that is my TDN tool cart I've had since 2016. It's uh, falling apart, but still works great. Or oh, it doesn't work great, but it works nicely. Inside of the cooler here, I keep my batteries, um, the glue gun, and the uh, Stucky LED light. Just makes it easy for me to get everything and protect my vehicle from batteries exploding or catching on fire. Got the Illuminate glue gun here, the uh, M18 12 volt battery. Thing lasts forever. Just cleaning the panel off here. Get it nice and clean so we can uh, take any fingerprints, grease, anything off the panel so we can see exactly what's going on here. These are nice microfiber towels I purchased out in Minnesota this past summer on a hill trail. I don't know what they're called, but they don't have edges on them. So this is really nice. No labels or anything. They're really nice. This on the body line here, this dent, it's uh, not the worst dent in the world, but you can see above the body line, there's some huge uh, crowns going on up there. When I first pulled up and saw this dent, I was like, Dang it, it's much bigger than I saw in the photo. I mean, you can see the crown goes all the way up to the window edge right there. Kind of unfortunate. And there's a little tiny dent here as well. A couple of, actually three of them. I ended up doing those as a courtesy to the customer. Just because, might as well, not leave those small dents. We're going to take this tail light out which is not the best access point to repair this dent. Popping the interior trim to get access to the two millimeter, the two 10 millimeter nuts. You're gonna need a deep socket to get those out. Once I remove those nuts, I just wiggle this uh, tail light back and forth to break it loose. And it comes out quite easily once you wiggle it back and forth. You can see the two studs for the 10 millimeter nuts and then the two studs where they clip into the quarter panel. We're going to remove this grommet to get access with our half inch tools. And then we're going to remove this right here. This put that back on there that prevents water leaks and moisture or contaminants <clears throat> elements getting inside of the vehicle. Important to put that back on. Clean the panel off with denatured alcohol. I use this because it removes pretty much everything on the panel. It allows the glue to adhere to the panel and the tab as well. Very important, make sure it adheres to the panel and the tab, otherwise it's just gonna continue to fail. Using Tab Weld, you can order at tabweld.com. It's really great in 70 degree temperatures, which is what I had this day. Flashing the tab. Put a little bit on here. I should not have used this method. I should have used a lot of tension puller. Probably would have been way more efficient. But I wanted to try out the um, slide hammer here. It's the only reason I went this route. I'm just going back and forth on this tab. I'm not trying to pull too hard because I don't want to do too much irreversible damage and tighten that crown up to where it's locked up where you really can't get the dent out which is why I should have used lateral tension would have probably just made the dent come out almost almost instantly but live and learn here I'm just tapping around the crown edges to release pressure 
I'm using a Atlas tab. It's, it's about a one inch football shaped tab. But applying the tab weld, I'm just gonna gently press it in there. Not too firm. I want it to be a soft, a wet pull. So the glue's still kind of wet. And you can see it's pulling it up. It locked it up right there. That was a mistake. Huge mistake. Oh well. I'm gonna tap this crown down some more. You can get this uh, blue tip from Dentcraft. And then you can get uh, the hammer from, I don't even know where. But we're gonna just apply a little crease tab in that little center of this crease just to release some more pressure. Heating the panel up to get the humidity off so that way the glue sticks. It's important that there's no moisture on the panel. This is a, uh, I think it's one of those Aussie tabs you get from, <clears throat> sorry, the ones you get from Anson. You know, a triangle small locker tab, you can get that from Anson or Black Plague. And this is a two and a half pound slide hammer you get from Kiko. I'm so glad I got that thing. It's, it's, it's been an absolute monster for pulling dents without break, feel like you're gonna break your wrist sometimes when you're pulling those smaller slide hammers. See, it's coming out. So we're just going to beat the crowns into submission. Okay, so what we're going to do here is, since there's relatively no access through that tail light, just because of the interior trim panel has a bulge in it, <clears throat> so I'm going to take the interior trim panel out. The only way you can do that is take the rear seats out and the floor carpeting and all that. So I got the seats out of the way. If you can see right below my left wrist, that opening inside that trim panel, that whole area touches the quarter panel. So you can't even get a tool in through there. Mobile Tech RX says there is access through that tail light. Maybe six inches is all you're gonna get. And then also says you can get access through the striker through the door. Well, I'm here to tell you that is not gonna happen on this vehicle. And I'll show you here in just a moment why. Yeah, we're trying to get, um, what is this I'm trying to get? I can't even tell. I think it's the nine volt cigarette or the cigarette lighter or something, something like that. I'm not sure. It's kind of boring to watch it though. I'll probably edit this out. Yeah. All right. Got it out. Yeah, so, oh, it is important to get this out to, so that way you can remove the trim panel because there's not enough wiring harness to uh, slide the trim panel out. Okay, so once you get that out, then you can remove this completely out of the vehicle. Very important. Get this out of the way. You see that huge area on the back side of that trim panel? That whole area is touching the quarter panel. No access through that. There's no, Leverage is terrible for this dent through that hole. It's just terrible. But look at how much open space there is in this panel. <clears throat> There's the dent, it's, it's sharp, absolutely sharp. You could take the bumper cover off and go through the vent cover down here if you have um, dents in certain areas. And go through that plug. And get access all the way up to the window. If you have severe hail damage, it's a must to take that out. Like I said, going through that little hole through the grommet through the tail light is pretty much non-existent unless you take that trim panel out. And then by the time you do that, there's so many other ways to get um, access to the dent. So this takes about eight minutes total to get the seat out, the trim panel out. Eight minutes, totally worth doing. Might as well just do it. And you can charge the customer for it because it is a R&I procedure needs to be done going through that striker plate i'm sorry not gonna happen and here's why you got a seat belt retractor in the way plus there's a reinforcement for it to mount to no tool is going to be able to fit in there to get that anywhere on that panel there's a seat belt retractor 
and is mounted to the reinforcement. So unfortunately you can't go through there on this particular one. I believe this was a 19 Toyota 4Runner. But the good news is you can still work it from that angle once you get the interior trim panel out. That is the good news. I'm not gonna lie to you, this dent kicked my butt. Mainly because I started it wrong, I should've used lateral tension. I wanted to use it, but I really, was like, nah, I'm gonna try the slide hammer out. But you can see what it looks like once we uh, started doing some pushing here. There's a lot of crown. So what I used here to get leverage, I had to put a hook tool on one of the slots and that was it. I was able to get tons of leverage to get this dent out. It was difficult though. It was still very difficult on my body. Working different angles. It was, it was just stressful on my joints. Anyone that does PDR for a long time, you, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Dent's coming out nicely. It's not looking too bad. Still very clean. Yeah, the hardest part was uh, where I locked the den up at the top above the body line. That, that was a challenge because at the angle I was standing at when I was pushing, I couldn't see where I was pushing. I mean, right there close up, you can see the bottom of the dent, but when you're really far back, you just can't see it, and it's it was a huge challenge. I had to use heat the, almost the entire time because I did not want to crack this paint. Dude, I can't see, man. The damn thing. Just, you can't see it. It makes the dent so hard. It's like, you, you just, you need leverage and you can't really get it. I like using black Tesla tape on this because I just don't like it on the, on the cherry tips. And you can get these tips from Anson, PDRtools.com I believe it is. They have a, a mobile app you can get on your phone as well. I've had that same match grade tip since 2017. It's it's actually been a really good tip. It's kind of hard to really see see what's going on because there's two lights going there. So I'm sorry about that. <clears throat> But the good news is you can see the dents coming out. I mean, it's looking great from this angle. And as, as we all know, black shows every little detail. There was so much cross-checking going on. Here I'm looking from the bottom of the dent, looking up vertically, just so I can cross-check it. I'm tapping the crowns down that you couldn't see if you were looking horizontally. A lot of crown work, a lot of blending. I think I would say the majority of this repair was blending. Move the light back further so you can see uh, any imperfections. and a knockdown and hammer. So this is where I finally cross check it. I actually should have started the repair on this direction, but I didn't. It was actually easier on my body and I could see the bottom of that sharp, deep dent. So lesson learned, start the repair for me on, in, on this side instead of through the tail light area. strength steel so it's not that a big a deal to work 
on versus the doors and fenders. Not so fun. I recently uh, picked up all data. I'm currently running a subscription or a um, trial with them for two weeks. Test it out I'm using the repair, the collision. <clears throat> and uh, what's great about it is you can see if it's high strength steel. Um, what what kind of high strength thing as far as the meg millipaxels or milli MPA? So it starts at 300 depending on the manufacturer and it goes all the way up to 900 and then it goes to ultra high strength steel. And what I found out last night that Honda uses a zinc coating on their steel, which is pretty interesting. There's so many different things you can find out on all data. It was it's 200 dollars a month for the version I'm getting, and I'm paying 200 dollars a month for Mobile Tech RX. So I'm like, eh, might as well go with all data and try it out and see how I like it. It tells you exactly how to RNI the vehicles. If you have never RNI before, just reach out to alldata.com and check it out and see if um, it's something you want to do. It's a learning curve. Just play around with it. Definitely do the trial version. But you can see here I'm using the um, the back edge of the bend on the tool instead of the red tip. I do that a lot. It just makes it easier so I don't have to switch out tools all the time. Okay, so this is what it looks like before I wet or I sanded and polished the panel. No sanding, no polishing just yet. You can see the little imperfection right there. I'm gonna sand that and polish it up and then see what it looks like afterwards. That little spot is the only defect in the panel. And so I'm just hitting it with some 2000 on a, and then I'm polishing it out by hand. I, I polish everything out by hand now. I don't use a buffer anymore just because I don't like swarm marks being on the vehicle and splatter being everywhere. It's, it's no big deal. It takes a little bit more effort, but to me, I think it's a cleaner polish and a cleaner repair versus slinging stuff around. So I like it. And then we're going to put the interior trim panel and everything back together. Put the tail light in first, just make it easier on yourself. Once you do that, then you can uh, put the interior trim panel back on. Make sure you get all your screws back in the correct places that the manufacturer assembled it. I think the seats were 14 millimeter or 12, I can't remember which one. I'm like trying to figure something out here. All right, putting the carpeting padding back in there. And then once this is secure, we um, pretty much done with the repair. Pack up and head on out. This one was a challenge. Kicked my butt. You can see this is the after with the polish and the sanding. For what it was, it looks absolutely amazing in my opinion. There's a small defect somewhere in that little spot that we sent in to polish. Let's see if we can pick it up in the video. I tried to pick it up for you. It's very, very minor. Where is it? If I can find it, I'll show it to you. I'm having a difficult time finding it. It's on 720p. <laughs> Guys, thanks for watching. I uh, hope you have a wonderful day.